Allow your body to have a couple of really good, deep, full breaths in and out. The idea that we're working with today is uh, following this musical theme, our idea is imagining that with all the movements and with every breath we take, we're inviting prana into our body. So prana is life force. You can think of it like maybe the nervous system or how open versus closed the muscles are. And imagine that as we're inviting so much prana in through motion and through breath today, imagine that it's almost like an orchestra is in our body. So maybe perhaps the legs and the feet are more of the bass notes, the really vibrant, deep tones. And maybe some of the upper parts, like our neck and arms and hands, maybe those are, are higher notes, like a violin or, or a piccolo or something like that. So kind of imagine you've got this music going on in your body. And so here at the beginning of class, maybe it's like an orchestra warming up where it does not sound that good. Nothing sounds tuned. Nothing is in harmony with one another. But gradually imagine as we continue to progress our way through class, and I'm trying to listen um, and imagine that you can hear this music going on in your body. And if there's little things that you can do to help adjust the body or to focus on, you know, moving it in a slightly different way that helps your musical number today, imagine you've got this beautiful piece that ends up happening through our practice today. So that music and helping it out is the biggest focus we've got set in our, in our class today. So to let us begin, let's start taking the knees in toward our chest. We can rock just a little bit around on the low back and on the hips. Kind of trying to find any spots that, that are particularly out of tune. Maybe take an extra breath or two to send energy or space into that area. Good. And from here, both hands clasp around the right knee with a little bit of kind of almost like a, a musical extension. Allow this left leg to reach out long for a moment and then slowly set that foot all the way down on the ground. So from here, continue to deepen this right knee, pulling it very nicely into the shoulder. And we'll take three cycles here. Let this right knee start to open out to the right. And then no need to rush it, but eventually the knee will start to head over toward the left. And imagine this is almost like a violin bow going back and forth. So eventually that, that right knee opens back out to the right. And over toward the left. It's like we're trying to get deep into that hip joint, one of those tightest joints in the body for a lot of people. This last time the knee goes wide and then a crossing over the body, it'll stay in that twist. And imagine it's almost like a violin just kind of holding that note out for a long time. So your goal is to continue to gradually melt deeper and deeper in the shape. So maybe now it's getting deeper into the hip or maybe it's deeper into the twist. But imagine there's never exactly an end. We're just slowly drawing this note out very, very long. Another beautiful inhale. And with the exhale, start to return the right hip to the ground. We're gonna reach this left, this right leg up to the sky. The hands can be clasping easily behind the back of the thigh. And then start to let this right knee bend and then extend it all the way straight up. And it's like we're trying to find some of those fibers on the back side of the, side of the leg. So we're going deeper and deeper, bending and straightening it. You feel it even deeper than the first time. Just a few rounds like that, continuing to pulse. It's like we're setting up and establishing the rhythm of our body. Our body has rhythm, it has vibration. Think of the heart beating. That's a percussive instrument right there. Our breath flowing. 
the nervous system pulses. Every cell of our body has its own rhythm that it pulses us. So it's like we're trying to find that music. Good. So this next time the leg extends upward, let it stay. Imagine a nice um, like musical instrument, like maybe a percussive instrument, like a bell on your big toe. And then let the, yourself circle the big toe as wide as it possibly can. can. Imagining that's helping to ring get that beautiful bell out, creating a whole new tone. Maybe one more circle to that direction and then go ahead and switch the circle to the other. Notice what's opening up in that direction in your foot. Good, and then wrapping that one up, go back and forth between flexing the foot so the toes are trying to come toward the torso and then pointing the toes as deep as you possibly can. And notice how when you flex the foot, the toes toward you, the calf stretches out so nicely. It's like we're getting as deep as we can into that area. It's like, it's like those church bells, we're getting the deeper tone into the calf. So one more time, flex and point. Good. And then let, the, let this leg muscularly stay up to the sky on its own, hands release. From here, let the right arm just kind of rest off to that right side. The left arm reaches up above the sky. Inhale, exhale, touch that left elbow to the left knee. Inhale, stretch it back out to hover the, above the ground. Exhale, touch nine. And inhale, exhale, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stretch it out long. And then let this right leg slowly lower all the way down to the ground. It's like there's a now a shift happening in the music. Something new is about to appear. The left knee starts to get hugged in toward the chest. Pull it in. How deep can it get pulled in toward that shoulder? Three nice openings where we allow that left knee to go left and then pull it all the way across the body toward the right. Opening back out for number two. Last one. When we go back into the twist, this one we stay, but it's like we're continuing to extend that note out almost indefinitely. Whether it's just a relaxation that's deepening the experience or that nice use of the exhale with the breath, whatever it is that deepens the experience, try to find that within your experience, within your body, within your cells. One more nice inhale. Exhale, the hips gradually start to return. Allow yourself to clasp hands behind the thigh. We're starting that pulsing. So leg up and leg bent. Getting deeper each time we go to the straightening action. One more round, bending and straightening. And then leaving it straight, picture that bell on your big toe and begin to circle it all the way around, as wide of a circle as we can possibly make. And switch the direction of the circle. Good. And then trying to ring it clear down into the calf, point the toes as deep as you can, and then peel the, the toes back to flex. Taking that a few more times.
One more time, point and flex. And then releasing the hands, the legs stays up to the sky. Let's begin to stretch this right arm up above our head. Take an inhale. Exhale, touch right over to right knee and stretch. Exhale, nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Good. When we release, bring both legs upright. We're grabbing onto the feet like a happy baby pose and find some way to touch some musically, some part of your body. So maybe you're kind of rubbing into the feet a little bit. Maybe you're pulling the knees wide like you're ringing a deep bell. Maybe you're rocking left and right, stretching the leg up to the sky. Just tune into your body. What areas need some attention in this leg, hip, and feet area? How can we give it to it? One more beautiful inhale. Exhale, release the knees together. We'll work our way up toward a sitting place. If you like to roll like a ball a few times, take that maybe three, four, five times. If you prefer just to come up, that's okay. Just come into to the cobbler pose. Maybe if you're rocking here, you find that moment of balance like a boat. Good, and when you're ready to settle forward, Begin to open up those knees, relax the spine forward. We'll start to take our head closer toward the right knee. The hands can be whatever spot is helpful. And feel how it's pulling some of that low back on that left side into a nice deeper kind of opening. And then walk our head over the other knee. Feel that length in the back. Returning forward, two more deep belly breaths. After that second one, we continue to arise. Let's straighten the legs out in front of us. Maybe take the hands behind us if that helps. Let the feet both together circle all the way clockwise and then counterclockwise. It's like if there's little snap crackles and pops that we, that we can get out of the feet, let's try to work that right on out. Good, one more time to each direction. And then leaving the feet flexed, bring the hands to plant just slightly behind the hips and try to lift the hips up. Holding here for a count of 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lowering hips back down, spine straightens back up tall. And then let yourself start to push the balls of the feet forward and then the toes, and then peel the toes back, and then bring the balls of the feet back. It's like progressing our way through, pushing through all those muscles of the feet. Good, peel back, let's go three more. All the way forward, and back. Two. And one. Good. And then starting with this erect spine, take a almost like a pianissimo, very, very softly, very quietly, our head starts to melt its way forward.
There's little movements that want to happen in the neck. Find that rhythm that feels very helpful. Good. When our spine rises back up, let's swing the legs around. We're heading toward a kneeling position. So we will begin to do our cat-cow spines, but like I mentioned before, we're trying to find that internal rhythm of our body. So don't feel like you have to go at the pace of anybody else. Just gradually begin to melt up and down. And if you find a spot of your, of your spine or any areas of these muscles that are super out of tune, take that moment to pause and inch into it to tune those areas. Maybe two more breath cycles. Good, and then keeping our toes pointed, come to sit back onto the feet like this. Our left hand will be off to the left side just to help pump us up as the right hand picks up the right knee. This is stretching the part of the foot that was just on the ground. So trying to pull it up. Different people are more or less flexible in this area, so don't feel any sort of sense of you need to be in any particular shape. Go ahead and gently release that one. Switch it out. Now we're picking up the left knee. When we switch that one back down, come forward. We could be rocking our feet in circles or we could be gently pounding it out. It's whatever feels best for the feet. Good. Let's try to stretch through the fascia on the bottoms of the feet. So tuck the toes. It's okay if you're just sitting a little bit of weight back and keeping your arms forward. Only if you can handle the full weight of your body when you come upright. So either way, we're taking a few good breaths. Try to breathe extra space, space into the areas that are being stretched really long right now. I'm gonna go for three more breaths if you can still handle it. Only when you finish that third breath, we'll come forward again in circles or pounding for the feet. Good. Right foot, we take it long, all the way as far as we can reach behind us, tuck those right toes, and then we start to use our arms to press back until we feel the right calf stretching. So I need to push so much that I'm lifting up the other knee, but you don't have to go that far if you feel it before that point. So ease into that Achilles tendon, ease into the calf. Maybe you're even feeling the stretch down into the foot. We're easing it as deep as possible. One more good inhale. And exhale, lower down so that we can switch it out. Left leg reaching, tucking, and then we press back. One more inhale. Exhale, we'll start to lower onto our knees. Let's come up to an easy high kneeling position. Our arms are out in front of us. Let the fingers get pulled down and then fingers up. Just a few rounds. It's almost like we're starting to warm up some of these conductor muscles. One more time, down and up. 
And then when we place our hands back onto the earth, we'll play with our first downward facing dog. Full we'll lift all the way up. Feel free to wiggle into muscles that need it. This will be one of those down dogs that will stay as long as it's still helpful. And at some point, we'll make our way up to the top of the mat for a forward fold. But no rush to get there if you want to enjoy this a bit longer. As we're in the forward fold, be conscious about what you're doing and how that helps you. So some of us may be purposely bending the knees so that the spine easily relax over. Some of us might be doing the opposite, trying to get the legs straight, even if that means the torso has to rise up a little bit. So just consciously, consciously find that spot that needs the attention, that needs the tuning. And here, take one more good inhale. Relax through the exhale. And then inhale to rise. Beautiful. Starting to warm up some of our conductor muscles. We're going to use our inhale to reach super high up to the sky. And then imagine you're grabbing something and you have to use activation and muscles to pull it down. With the inhale, it's feather light floating back up. Exhale, grab and pull. Finding strength in the back, strength in the shoulders. It's nice because with the reaching up, that creates so much space in the lungs for that inhale. And with the pulling down, it helps to squeeze out some of the stale air with the exhale. Helping to pulse our body with prana. Let's go three more. Last one. Good. And then bring the right hand to the right thigh. Circle the left hand up and over, and we'll stay a little bit longer, stretching out that shoulder area. If it feels nice to even kind of ease into that shoulder, maybe pull the thumb back a little bit, and then round the shoulder forward a little bit, just kind of getting into all those tight spots. One more breath. And then with the rise, we switch on our sides. Right arm going coming up and over. Maybe ease into that shoulder, pull back. And round forward just a little bit. Good. Gently rising up. Let's allow ourselves to circle the arms up, leaving the arms right by our ears. Make sure the feet are hip distance, and then let yourself start to sit back like you're about to go into a chair. This brings us into fierce pose. Keep the knees right over the ankles. All that strength in the shoulders. One more inhale. Exhale, hands down to the heart, and then hook this right wrist to the left thigh and left wrist up to the sky, or you could always slide down to the elbow. Good. Gradually unwind until hands are at the heart. And then straighten the arms right up by the ears again, feel that strength in the shoulders. Try to keep the arms more squeezed together rather than displaying open. Hands to the heart. And then second side, maybe hook the wrist or maybe go all the way to the elbow. Good, sliding back to hands at the heart. Maybe even arms right by the ears. Two more breaths. Last inhale. 
Exhale, find your forward fold. Pausing for a few extra breaths, maybe straight legs, maybe bent knees. Good, inhale, half lift. And exhale, sliding the hands down. Start to step the feet back, this can be plank or kneeling plank. We'll move through a flow, so lowering all the way down. Maybe a mini back bend. And then up to downward facing dog, or if you like child pose for a few moments, that's beautiful as well. From the down dog, we'll transition by lifting right leg clear up to the sky. The let reach, and then step right foot in between hands. Back heel can rest down. With the front knee bent in warrior one shape, sweep the arms up to the sky and feel your weight sinking down. Good, tuning into some of these deep bass strings. We're going to let the arms drop down by our sides. At the same time, the front leg straightens and then we begin to bend forward, maybe about halfway down. So those fibers being pulled long and then gradually reverse that out. So bending the knee, the arms sweep back up. So we'll take a few more rounds like that, just easing into those long muscles. And rise. Taking two more rounds. Good, on this last one, when we start to straighten the leg, we bow forward and stay. Once your spine has found its good spot, drop the hands down and just notice where the hands would fall without the spine moving. At that point, if you do want hands to drop a bit further, that is okay, but notice where that long strength spot was. to continue to allow all those fibers to get pulled as long as they will. Tuning the string section. One more deep breath in. And then bending that knee until hands can plant all the way down. We'll step back. You could just go straight to child's pose. Or take a flow with me, lowering. Going through that back bend. And that beautiful downward facing dog. Start to lift that left leg as high as you can possibly reach. And step that foot in between hands, back to the rest down. With this warrior one leg set up already in place, the arms can sweep up. Feel yourself maybe sinking down another inch. And then we begin those slow cycles. Arms lower, straighten the leg, and lean. Good, releasing our way back up. Four. Three, two, the last time is the one where we pause and then we can lower our hands. Continue to see if that front leg can straighten. Try to squeeze the knee, lifting the kneecap just a little bit. One more nice inhale. 
exhale, bend the knees until the hands can plant, stepping back, maybe straight to child pose or to the flow. This will be another one of those down dogs where we stay until we're satisfied, at which point we work our way up to the forward fold at the top. One more inhale up at the top, exhale, inhale to rise. Good, hands at the heart. So here, this is one, sometimes the conductor needs to have a little brain puzzle so that it can figure out how to orchestrate and let all the different pieces come together in union. So this one is just as much a brain puzzle as anything else. We start off with our arms reaching up to the sky. As our torso turns toward the right, we drop our arms down and it starts to trace a circle. So that left arm drops forward, that right arm drops back. We, when the arms meet at our sides, we then turn our torso to face to the left and then lift the arms up to that direction. Good, and then reverse, the arms drop down Torso turns to the other side and then they lift up. Good. So if you need to keep on going slow so the brain can figure this out, that's beautiful. If you get to the point where you can just use a nice exhale to sweep and then circle up, and then exhale, sweep, circle up, that would be perfectly fine. If it gets challenging, just start right back where we were, go nice and slow. <sighs> Two more full breath cycles. Good, and then right here up at the center, bring the hands together in front of the heart. Tree pose, shifting our weight onto left foot, the right knee opens, and that right foot finds the ankle or the calf or maybe the thigh. Feel the spine lifting up tall. And only if the balance is easy today, maybe the conductor arms extend up and out like we're holding a huge note for the whole orchestra. Good, one more inhale. Exhale, hands to the heart, float this right knee forward. And as we start to kick that leg back through warrior three, maybe the arms open like airplane. And then we gently land warrior one, arms sweep up to the sky. Just one cycle, the arms start to drop down by our sides, front leg straightens, we bow halfway forward. Take your time to easily rise back up, bending the knee, arms return, inhale. Exhale, rotate open, warrior two. Imagine with each of these next poses that we're going to take, it's like you're um, shifting toward a, new, a whole new note. We're shifting it each and every time, finding this beautiful progression in the music. So this left elbow will drop down to the left side and the right arm extends all the way toward the front of the room. Feel that reach, fill all the way from that back heel up to this top wrist. A long note getting pulled really far. And back up to warrior two. Keeping the base section strong and sturdy down, we reverse it out. So right hand to right leg. The other arm pulls as far back as it can reach. Good, returning to warrior two. Front leg straightens. Triangle pose or reach the hands first. 
and then drop the hand where it falls. Top hand is reaching up, finding a really high note. We can either stay here or if half moon pose is in your practice, rise up and then cartwheel for a moment into half moon pose. Back leg lifting if you took that option. And if you're in half moon, gently lower. Everybody rises back through warrior two. The back hand, the right hand, comes around from your back over toward that right hip and you try to pull the arm as long as possible. And then this left arm leans us toward the back of the mat. Good, open back out. Now the switching it out, the other arm is wrapping around and lean up to top of mat. Good, and open. Beautiful, hips turn to the top edge. We're facing back like a warrior one. Clasp the hands behind your back. Pull the hands down for a moment, giving a little heart opener. And then bow all the way forward, shoulder opener. Hands drop down to the floor. Standing split, the hands bump forward a foot or so. The back foot lifts as high as possible. One more inhale. Exhale, everything drops down, standing forward full. One more inhale. Exhale. Inhale, rise. When the arms sweep up, turn your torso to the right, drop the arms in that circle, torso to the left to rise. Arms drop down, torso to the right to rise. Good, twice more opening to each side. Exhale, inhale. One more each. Good, facing forward, hands at the heart. Shift your weight onto right foot and left foot takes that tree pose. So choose the placement of the foot, the one that'll stay. Posture lifts up really tall. And only if you feel balanced, we start to allow those conductor arms to open. Hold that grand note. One more inhale, exhale, hands to the heart, float this left knee forward, kick it back, maybe airplane arms. As we gently land, warrior one, arms sweep up. Good, arms lower, straighten the front leg, bow halfway down. Good, front knee bends, sweep the arms back up, inhale. Exhale, warrior two, rotate open. Front elbow to front thigh. Feel that long reach from the back heel all the way up to the top wrist. Warrior two. The base is steady as we reverse the arms, leaning toward the back wall. Good, rising, straighten the front leg, triangle pose, reach the arm first, and then land the hand, pop arm, get some nice high notes. Staying here, or perhaps cartwheeling to half moon. We're in half moon, start to lower. Everybody's up to warrior two. Good, and then just the arms switch it out. So this left hand winds around the back toward right hip, and then right arm leans toward back of mat. 
Good, open. Right arm toward left hip, left arm reaches forward. Good, open. Turning our hips toward top of the mat like a warrior one, clasp your hands behind your back, sliding the hands down to a heart opener. And then let that continue to roll our way forward, shoulder up. And surround that front foot. And then as our weight goes on to right leg, the hands go forward, back leg floats, standing split. One more inhale. Exhale, land that foot, forward fold. Feel the muscles relax. Inhale to rise. Hands to our heart. One more little conductor thing that we'll be doing. Just imagine you're waving your arms like that conductor. This is called the breath of joy. The inhale is three parts. And then with the exhale, we let it all out. So that's the breath part of it. The arm part will be swinging our arms forward and then out to the side and then forward before we drop down with that exhale. So I'll show you one round. Know that if you've got blood pressure issues at too high or too low, and this makes your head have any, any sort of blood pressure issues, make this just about the shoulders, just using the breath, just with the shoulders instead of the full going down. So breath of joy, inhale, and then exhale down. Good, and that's it. So we'll do about five rounds total. When you're ready, start with that inhale. And exhale. Two more. Last one down. Good. When we rise up, reach the arms up one more time. And then let everything be like a melting action. So hands start to droop down heavy. And then the neck starts to droop down, melting toward the earth. Just feel everything getting slowed down. Inhale a slow half lift. Exhale, sliding the hands down, stepping back. This could either be our last child pose or our last flow. Take it extra slow. Eventually, we come all the way to sit. So when we're here, we'll start off with the left leg long out in front of us and the right foot planted. So take your left hand or left elbow to grab that knee. Straighten the spine up. And then exhale, start to ease into any last spots of the spine that need this beautiful twist. Returning forward, let that right thigh fall down. Inhale, circle up, a grand conductor note. And exhale, sweeping forward. If you can easily grab the foot, maybe you give your foot a little massage. Lifting the spine up enough that the, this left leg out in front of us can slide to the left a little bit wider. Once it's there, left hand plants in front of that left leg, and then right arm reaches up and over. Okay. 
Good. Free out your shoulders so that you can square yourself leaning down over that straight leg. And then walk our hands forward toward top of mat. We walk our way back up. We're going to cradle out this left leg, the baby cradle. Rock the hip out a couple of times. And then set this left shin on top of the right shin. If that doesn't work in the hips, just drop the leg in front. And we give a moment for that left foot to get another massage. Find the tightest spot to the foot, maybe the toes. Maybe it's the arch of the foot, or maybe it's another spot. From here, start to wind the right elbow under the left elbow, like an eagle's position. Drop the shoulders down away from the ears at the same time that you're trying to lift the elbows up to be in line with the shoulders. Feel that expansion in the shoulders and in the neck. Good, and then as you release your arms, find the floor and slide forward. Turning back up. This time the right leg is straight out in front of us. Left foot is planted. We hook the right hand or the right elbow to wind our spine into the twist. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, releasing. Turn forward, left side drops down to the floor. Inhale, circle up to a grand note. Exhale, release forward, maybe foot massage. And lift up enough that the right leg can slide open to the right. Right hand drops down to the floor in front of the shin. Left arm reaches up and over. Free out the right arm so that we can square our shoulders down. Rising up, cradle out this right hip, rocking it out a couple of times. Trying to see if we can drop this right shin on top of the left shin. We give it a foot massage for a moment, that top right foot. And that feels pretty good. Left elbow winds under the right elbow. Try to drop the shoulders down as you lift the elbows up. And as we release, find the floor, slide forward.
Then lifting up, take the legs to a simple cross leg place. Grab the hands behind your back. Hands go to the right hip as the right ear drops over right shoulder. Like one last beautiful note for our class here. The head rises up, hands go to the left hip, the left ear drops down. Good, release the head, release the hands. We'll start working our way down toward a laying position. If this last stretches your body really needs before Shavasana, take some time to do that. Otherwise, if your body feels great just to settle directly into that shape, that's beautiful. Either way, when you get to your Shavasana today, imagine now that you've got everything tuned beautifully, Imagine with each breath you take, you're inviting in more prana, more beauty, more energy. And it's like you're listening to a sound, a music that only you can hear. But enjoy it. Let it flow. Let it resonate. Enjoy all the different parts and pieces. Here, begin to deepen the inhales and the exhales. Introduce little movements back to fingers and toes. 
ankles and wrists. Stretching it out like we're waking up first thing in the morning. Eventually taking a nice fetal position off to one side. Enjoying another breath or two, and then rising up when you're ready. As we arise, we join our hands together in front of our hearts. We imagine kind of wrapping up this current rendition of the song that's playing. And we realize that as we continue to travel into the rest of our day, this music will continue to do different things. And so if suddenly you notice the tuba getting super out of tune, take that moment to stretch and adjust and tune it so that it can feel really good. And if other parts are coming out of harmony, take that time to readjust them as well. So that ultimately we feel good, we feel harmonized, we feel at peace within the very cells of our body. And so with this musical idea leading us into the rest of the day, let's wrap up the time we got to share together today with one last musical note sounding out a resonant ohm together. Deep inhale now. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste.